The gentleman from Washington is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to yield five minutes to the gentleman from California, the ranking Republican on the Water and Power Subcommittee of the Natural Resources Committee, Mr. McClintock. Thank the gentleman for yielding. Mr. Speaker, those who blame the drought for our problems ignore the fact that this is very mild drought by historical standards. In fact, during much more severe droughts than the one that we're currently experiencing, far more water flowed to the Central Valley than it does right now. And I wonder if the proponent seriously would deny that 200 billion gallons of water has been diverted uh, from the Central Valley by these regulations. It's morally unconscionable that water recycling bills to benefit the pampered and privileged communities of San Francisco can sail through the House while 40,000 families have lost their jobs in the San Joaquin Valley because this government has diverted 200 billion gallons of water in order to indulge one of the environmental left's pet causes, the Delta smelt. But I'd like to address some of the basic economics of these recycling bills. You know, a generation ago, the principal objective of our water policy was to create abundance. That was an era when vast reservoirs produced a cornucopia of clean and plentiful water on a scale so vast that many communities didn't bother to meter it. That clean, cheap, and abundant water also made America the breadbasket of the world and the Central Valley of California uh, the breadbasket of that state. But the majority party has abandoned that policy. It's replaced it with a very different philosophy that the government's principal focus should not be to produce abundant water, but rather to ration and recycle water shortages that government has caused by abandoning abundance as its primary objective. The result is increasingly expensive water that now affects our prosperity as a nation. By its own admission, this administration is no longer analyzing the costs and benefits of projects in the bill now before us. In committee, the administration admitted that it faces a $600 million backlog of 53 water recycling projects like these and still hasn't bothered to prioritize them, let alone to figure out how to pay for them. Now, this bill provides a 25 percent federal match for six local water recycling projects in the San Francisco Bay Area. It increases the maximum federal cost share for two others. The total cost to American taxpayers for this bill is $38 million. According to its sponsors, it will produce 2.6 billion gallons of water. Um, that comes to about 8,000 acre feet. Now, let's do the math here. $38 million for 8,000 acre feet. That comes to $4,500 per acre foot. That's just the federal share. The total cost of these projects is four times that amount. Uh, or more than $18,000 per acre foot. Now, let's compare that to the capital cost of the nearby Oroville Dam. That was roughly $600 million in 1968. You do the inflation adjustment, it's $3.5 billion in today's money. That dam produces 3.5 million acre feet of water. So, in other words, the modern-day inflation-adjusted cost of the Oroville Dam, including its massive power plant, comes to about $1,000 per acre foot. The projects in this bill cost more than $18,000 per acre foot overall, including $4,500 per acre foot directly from the National Treasury, which, in case you haven't noticed, is empty. I raised these issues in committee. I did not actively oppose the bill because the House has yet to set fiscal standards for recycling measures like this one. It needs to. But I also must agree with Ranking Member Hastings and Congressman Nunez and others that it's a travesty that we should vote for two and a half billion more gallons of water for San Francisco while taking away 200 billion gallons of water from the Central Valley of California. At the same time that the Central Valley taxpayers are struggling with up to 40 percent unemployment rates, at the same time that all taxpayers payers are paying higher grocery bills as a result of these heartless water diversions. Those same taxpayers are being asked to pay a super premium subsidy to Bay Area water users whose representatives have endorsed this folly. And to add insult to injury, Mr. Nunez is not even allowed to offer amendments to restore water deliveries that would mean jobs for 40,000 unemployed California families without costing our Treasury a dime. So for all of those reasons, I urge my colleagues to oppose this bill. Not only can we do much better 
we could not possibly do any worse. And I yield back the balance. The gentleman yields back the balance of his